Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Wasal Kanayo. I am one of three assistant principals at Horizon High School. We welcome you this evening to our second rising sophomore and junior registration night. Joining me this evening is assistant principal Dr. Glenda Hammond, counselors Holly McGregor, and also Ms. Shannon Renfro, two of our three school counselors. Tonight, we're going to talk about preparing you to come in for or to prepare for takeoff as you enter your sophomore and junior year with us. Some of the things that we want you to keep on your radar and that we will discuss tonight as we enter into your sophomore or junior year are new course offerings that we plan to offer in the next school year, what you should be thinking about as you plan for life beyond the horizon, and we have an informative and interactive presentation planned for you this evening with lots of information. So please make yourself comfortable, grab a snack, and get your questions ready. Our presentation is not too long. It will last somewhere between 30 to 40 minutes, and we will take questions throughout the presentation as well as at the end of the presentation. So we welcome you to type your questions into the Q&A as we walk through the presentation this evening. We have a Q&A as well as a chat. Feel free to type your questions into either of those. Please note that the presentation is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel and that once you type any questions, your name as well as the question do become uh, public knowledge. So keep that in mind. If you have a single or one on one specific questions for any of our counselors, you can feel free to reach out to your counselor via email and we will be happy to answer any more specific questions that way. So this evening, the things that we're going to discuss are um, going to start with our graduation requirements. We're going to briefly review those. We're not going to go into too much detail, but we're going to provide you with some resources for additional information if you have more questions. We are going to discuss the minimum requirements for graduation per the state of Florida and our advice relative to course selection and college or career planning. We will briefly discuss things to think about depending on the direction that you think you want to take after high school, including possible advanced coursework opportunities and dual enrollment, as well as the Bright Futures scholarship and what it is. You may be thinking that it's still early if you're a freshman or you're a sophomore to be thinking about what you're going to be doing after high school, but it is not too early it is time for us to start thinking about those things if you haven't already. So as I said, our, our presentation today is interactive, so I'm going to open a poll. You should be able to see a poll pop up on the right of your screen, and we are going to ask you to tell us after graduation, um, excuse me, which of the following is not a graduation requirement. So I would like you to answer that question, you can select more than one option. So of those choices listed there, which is not a graduation requirement, a minimum GPA, two years of a world language, passing the FSA, ELA, and Algebra EOC, 100 hours of community service, and hope. Again, you may choose more than one answer there. So go ahead and select those that are not graduation requirements. We have about 15 seconds left for you to get your answer choices in. We do have about half of our participants who haven't yet responded. So if you are able, you'll see that poll there on your right side. Go ahead and tell us which of those are not graduation requirements. All right, so I'll go ahead and share those results with you. Keep in mind that poll results are anonymous, so you can see the overall results, but no one will be able to see your specific answers. Um, so 25 out of our 85 part current participants stated that two years of a world language is not a graduation requirement, and they are correct. The world language is not a requirement for graduation. It is recommended. We do recommend our students that they take two years of a world language, and also some colleges may require that for admission, but it is not a requirement for graduation. And the other one is the 100 hours of community service. Although that's a requirement for Bright Futures, 
It is not required for graduation. So thank you for everyone who participated in um, providing an answer there. So graduation requirements are minimum requirements established by the state of Florida that each student must meet in order to qualify for a high school diploma. These requirements are established by the state and we don't actually as a school or even as a district, we don't have leeway to waive or adjust what the minimum requirements are. The state establishes them and we have to ensure that our students fulfill those minimum requirements. Of course, students can go above and beyond the minimum requirements, but those minimums that are listed have to be met in order for a diploma to be issued. So as you can see on the screen, the minimum requirements for credits are shown for each content area. And the last listed there for credits is eight elective. One thing that I wanted to point out about the eight elective requirement is that students can use core classes to apply towards this eight elective category. So what I mean by that is let's say that a student takes four science classes. The minimum required for graduation is three. So a student could use that fourth science credit within the elective category. So taking additional core classes will help you fulfill your elective requirements. So I think that's something important for you to keep in mind. In addition to the credit requirements, the state requires a minimum GPA of a 2.0 on the unweighted scale. They require a passing score on the Algebra 1 EOC as well as on the FSA ELA. Now they do provide that students can fulfill the requirements for the FSA ELA and the Algebra EOC by earning what we call a concordant score, which means that let's suppose a student is struggling to pass the FSA ELA, but they're able to earn a 420 or higher on the SAT, they can use that score to satisfy the ELA requirement for graduation without actually passing the actual FSA ELA. So they have to pass either the state test or one of those assessments that provides um, concordancy. And I said 420, I was reading the math. It's actually 480 to the ELA concordancy. So to find out more information on the graduation requirements, including how to earn a, um, a seal, including the scholars, merit, or biliteracy seal, you know, as well as how to satisfy the HOPE credit through other methods aside from HOPE, you can go to our website on the Student Services tab. There's a link called Graduation Requirements and you can find more information there. Also students, you have access to a student body Canvas page. You should have all accessed this page yesterday when you completed the uh, Nearpod of registration presentation. In that same location, you can find the graduation requirements and additional documentation there. All right, so at this time, we're going to do another poll. This one is easy. There are no right or wrong answers. What, I what we would like you to tell us now are what are your plans for after graduation as of today? We realize they may change, but what is it that you're planning to do right after high school? Do you think that you'll go straight into employment, that you will join the military, that you will go to um, career tech school, a two-year college or a four-year university. We also have another option if you think that there's another route that we missed here. We have about 10 seconds left. All right, thank you to everyone who responded. And I'm going to release those answers now out of, of roughly 40, 50 responses that we got. Um, one person said they would like to go directly into employment. Two people have shared that they would like to go to career tech school. Three would like to go to a two year college. 41 would like to go directly to a four year university and two said other. So I think that's interesting. Thank you guys for your responses and, and for completing that. All right, so now I'm going to pass it over to Ms. McGregor and she's going to talk about life beyond the horizon. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Now let's go ahead and look at the future beyond horizon. It is important. Ms. McGregor, we do not hear you. Can you hear me now? Not yet. 
I can hear you. How about now? Got one thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Okay. Wonderful. We're still not, we're still not hearing you. Oh. I've got two panelists thumbs up yes. with me. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. you're good. That was my volume. I apologize. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So we're looking to the future beyond horizon, and it's important to think about what opportunities your students are wanting to set themselves up for with your course selection. We also want you to think about our resources like the College and Career Center and applications like Common App, SCORE, and more that can help you in preparing for the future. At this point, you may or may not have a clear picture of what you want to do after high school. You have a wide range of opportunities that await you. While you do not necessarily need to know right this minute exactly what you want to do after high school, it is important that by this point you have a solid idea of what direction you want to head. You should already be taking classes that will prepare you to either enter employment, technical college, the military, or to continue on with school. Some students have already begun traditional or technical college while still in high school through our dual enrollment pro programs. And others are already preparing for their ASVAB testing for military and or have joined our NDCC program. Our intention throughout the registration process is to guide you to make the choices now that are going to open up the right doors for you down the road based on your projected flight plan. One of the most common questions we get in student services is should my student take AP, ACE, or dual enrollment courses? The answer to that question truly depends on the student and their intended path. Each of these options provides rigorous learning opportunities that are actually quite comparable to each other. The curriculum in all three of these options is college level, weighted on a 6.0 scale, and academically rigorous. The difference between the programs and the idea of choosing the best program is somewhat misleading. My suggestion is that you research the schools you plan to apply to to determine their policies and preferences, and also generally recommend that along the lines of developing a rounded student, taking one or more courses from each of these programs is generally a wise route to take. Additionally, please know that it is not necessary to take excessive amounts of these courses in order to be appealing candidate to university. When looking at an analysis of freshmen admitted to the Florida State Universities in the 2018 academic year, freshmen had an increasingly higher chance of getting accepted as they took more of these level classes until they got to five. The statistics show that taking 15 versus five of these courses did not significantly improve your chances of acceptance in school, specifically FSU in this case. Taking five to six classes versus one or two does increase your chances of acceptance, but taking five to six versus nine or 10 does not cause much statistical difference. It is important to note that when it comes to college admissions, universities are increasingly looking to admit well-rounded students who demonstrate a work, school, home life balance by participating in multiple areas. ACE not only prepares students to get into a university, but it also provides them with the skills required to be successful once there. A study done by the Director of Admissions found that ACE program graduates attending the University of Florida had an average end of year freshman GPA of 3.46, whereas students coming from other acceleration mechanisms such as advanced placement, and IB had an average GPA of a 3.12 and 3.10, respectively. We highlighted this information not to emphasize ACE, AP, or dual enrollment classes are better options than each other, but to emphasize the opportunity and benefits within each program. Dual enrollment is another amazing opportunity available at Horizon. OCPS offers four different opportunities for dual enrollment through Orange Technical College, Valencia College, University of Central Florida, University of Florida, and each of these programs have different benefits and requirements for entry. The dual enrollment program enables qualified students an opportunity to participate in an academic acceleration program. It allows students to pursue an advanced curriculum that earns the student both high school and college credit simultaneously for free. 
planning ahead is necessary when interested in dual enrollment due to application deadlines following the year or semester prior to enrollment, most of which will be open in February for the fall of 2022. If college is the likely route that you think you might go, I highly encourage you to review the requirements for the Bright Futures Scholarship. The Bright Futures Scholarship is a scholarship available to all Florida residents based on completion of specific requirements. Please familiarize yourself with the testing, GPA, and course requirements, as this opportunity is a wonderful chance to attend college with the majority, if not all, of your tuition and fees covered. Additionally, Note that if you complete the Cambridge Diploma and 100 hours of community service, you will automatically qualify for the highest level of Bright Future Scholarship, regardless of test score or GPA. This is a huge opportunity that I encourage you to think really hard about and discuss with your parents. Beginning in the fall 2021 semester, Bright Future's Medallion Scholarship students enrolled in an associate's degree program at a Florida college system institution will receive 100% of tuition and specific fees. Upon completion of an associate's degree, a student may use his or her award to pursue a baccalaureate degree and receive 75% of tuition and specific fees. This is an incentive for students who might otherwise go directly to a four-year university with a 75% scholarship to have 100% of their tuition covered by first routing themselves through the two-year school. That's something that I want to elaborate on for a moment. Um, for many students, going directly to a four year university is a direct aim and objective for various reasons. For some, it might be that they just have a goal of getting directly into a four year university. We saw that on our poll. Um, nearly half of our of our attendees tonight and nearly everyone who responded said that after they graduate high school, they want to go directly to a four year university. And so um, many of our students have that goal set early on. And for some, it may be that they like the idea of attending a big name school right out, right out of high school. Or for some students, they want to leave home and get away from, um, from where they've grown up or experience a new city, and that's exciting for them. Um, for others, they appreciate the extra time or benefit of saving expenses by attending a two-year college prior to university. And I think it's worth mentioning that attending a two year college should not be looked at as a step backwards, downwards, or otherwise negatively. Some students will quickly dismiss this as an option with their sights set solely on directly attending um, the university system directly out of high school. And I think it's important that in terms of the end goal, which for our students who are going straight to a four year school, is obviously a bachelor's degree, at least the immediate goal is a bachelor's degree, even if they have intentions to continue beyond that. Um, the two year college is a great option to gain your first 60 credits prior to going into the four year setting. I share this with you because I have seen over the years, many students put an extreme amount of pressure on themselves to get accepted into specific four year universities. And the reality of the admissions process today is that it is extremely competitive and expensive to get into and to attend a four year university. So I'm not trying to discourage anyone from that goal or from trying to go directly to a four year school, but I think it's important and it's it's a good thing to leave the door open to the possibility of attending a two year school prior to going to a four year university. And it's important to know that that doesn't diminish or take away anything from the bachelor's degree that you will ultimately earn from that four year university. I'll tell you me personally, I went to a community college um, locally before I moved away to college. I lived in a, in a town in which we didn't have a, public uni a large public university. And so um, for many reasons, I stayed home and completed my first two years before going to university. So for me, that was a positive experience and uh, my diploma says Florida International University. And so it, it doesn't reflect or even show that I attended the two year school um, initially. So I, it's a point that I think is important for our students to remember. And I think that it will, it will help alleviate some of the pressure 
to get into that four year school if they know that this is a viable and a positive option for you. Additionally, as Ms. McGregor just mentioned, if you earn the 75% Bright Future Scholarship and you attend the two year community college, the state of Florida will pay 100% of your tuition for those two years, which I think is, is a great deal and reason to attend just for that alone. Achieving the, four, the full medallion scholarship, we saw the um, requirements here on this previous slide. You have to have um, high test scores of 1330 on the SAT or 29 on the ACT. That's not very easy to get. This GPA of a 3.5 is doable for, mo for many students. But the test score of a 1330 is not is not an easy one to get. That 1210 is is achievable again for many students. If you get that in your 75 your 75 hours of community service, you will have 100% of your tuition and fees paid for at a community college such as Valencia. So to put it into perspective in terms of admissions, um, in the last in 2021 uh, admission cycle. There were 52,513 students who applied to the University of Florida, incoming freshmen only that applied to the University of Florida for admission. Of those 52,500 students, applicants, 14,561 were admitted. That's about 27% of the applicants that applied to UF were admitted uh, as accepted for the fall um, admission cycle. So I think that it's important to keep those types of numbers in mind. And um, we have on the screen now the state university system matrix. This is the 2020 abridged Florida state university system matrix. It's available on our website. It is also available on your student body canvas page students. And this table shows the average GPA, SAT and ACT scores, as well as application deadlines and other um, interesting information such as tuition costs uh, for all of the state universities within the state of Florida. One thing that I want to point out regarding this matrix is that the GPAs shown are weighted. They're on a weighted scale and you know that right off the bat because they go beyond 4.0. So if we were talking about unweighted GPAs, they would, they would not be higher than 4.0. And one thing that I want to point out is that these GPAs are not the GPA that you will see on your transcript because every district has their own formula for calculating GPAs. As an example, we count AP, ACE, and dual enrollment classes worth six points for an A on the weighted scale. Some other districts count the, the, those same courses as five points or even possibly 4.5 points on, the weighted, on their weighted scale. So the university will recalculate your GPA based on their own weighted scale. And usually they only will calculate your core classes. They usually exclude your elective classes in the calculation of the GPA that they assign for you. So this is their mid-range score of GPAs for their admitted students in the 2020 admission cycle. It's important to note that students can have GPAs or test scores that are outside of these ranges and be accepted. So, for example, FSU has an, a mid SAT range of 1250 to 1400. Now, that's not to say that no students have a 1200 that are admitted. They, there are students with scores outside of these ranges that are admitted into FSU. But this serves, this number here serves as a good gauge for you to get an idea as to where you would stand in the admissions process. So now I'm going to right. it back to Ms. McGregor. She's going to talk a little bit more about graduation. Yes, we're going to pull our focus back towards graduation. And in selecting your classes, you want to be looking towards the future, but you also want to be focusing on what's important in the here and now, which is getting towards graduation. The course selection process is opening up this week through a Google form just like last year. Rising seniors especially need to make sure that they are getting all the requirements scheduled in. You have, if you haven't completed HOPE yet, schedule it. If you still need a performing or fine art, schedule it. What about a world language? Is it, needed for it is not needed for graduation, but if you already completed the first year, 
it might be wise to complete up the second year of the language for college and scholarship opportunities. We are excited to, to announce that there are new course offerings coming to Horizon, including Law Studies, Personal Finance, Hospitality and Tourism, African American and Women's Studies, Theater, Cinema, and Film Analysis, Music Theory, Horticulture, Wrestling, AP Art 3D, AP Art History, Painting, Creative Writing, Holocaust and Sociology, ACE Psychology 2, and AP Computer Science A. We will assess student interest in these courses based on the number of students who sign up for each course. And if given enough students for any class, we will offer the courses listed here. To find out more information about the course offerings, including new and previously offered courses, please visit the electives and program slide presentation link available on our website. On the polling option you see here, please type the name of any new classes we plan to offer that interest you. We have about 15 seconds remaining. All right, so we have interest really all over the place, which is great. That is exciting to see. Thank you all. Ms. McGregor mentioned the elective slides and programs presentation. We've put together a presentation of about 87 slides of various programs and courses that we offer at Horizon. And if you go to our website, horizonhs.ocps.net, under Academics, electives, you'll see a link that says description of elective courses, and you can click on that presentation and view all of those uh, new, as well as the prior classes that we offer there. And so this is um, here on your screen now, what our website looks like. You'll click there on the academics tab, and then electives, and then you'll see that link right there. Once you open that up, this is what the first slide will look like. And students, you may have accessed this yesterday when you viewed the registration presentation. If not, I definitely encourage you to get onto that and review the courses that we'll offer next year, because that's gonna be an important part of the registration process for you. Most of those slides also have, has the contact information for the teacher or teachers who teach the course, so that if you have any questions about it, you can reach out directly to them and ask them your questions. Our students had a presentation yesterday um, the links are available on their Student Body Canvas page in which they um, reviewed the process for choosing courses. Students and parents, um, you guys can look at the Grad Requirements tab in Skyward to see which classes you still require in order to be able to be on track for graduation. And if you have any questions about courses that you're interested in, again, you can reach out to teachers. You can also ask your counselor if you have any questions. After this presentation this evening, you will receive um, students to your OCPS email around 7 to 7.30. You will receive an email with a Google form for you to be able to complete the course registration uh, form for us. We will leave this open until the 12th. So you will have until January 12th, next Wednesday, to complete this form. We ask that you take the time to sit down with your parents to complete this form with them in order to review your course um, options and selections for the next school year. Keep in mind that we, the form will take you about 30 minutes and we will choose this year a little bit differently than last year. We will choose your core classes for you with the exception of science. You will select your science class for next year and the reason is that our, our math, 
our social studies and our English classes really follow a pretty straightforward progression. For the most part, you progress from one class into the next class. We kind of know where your, your track to head. Science can go a little bit all over the place, which is why we're asking you to tell us which science class you would like to go into. We will look at your current placement, your grades, your performance in your class, as well as we'll ask your teacher for input on which co core class, that means again, math, English, or social studies that you should go into next year. And what we will do is that on the 13th of January, after you've submitted your form, remember you have until the 12th, we will send you an email in which we list all of the courses that you've signed up for in terms of your electives and science class. We will also list the English, math, and history class that we have selected for you. And then you will have a meeting with your counselor sometime in the next month to review the choices that have been emailed to you that you selected or those core classes that we selected for you. You, you will be able to make adjustments. So, for example, if we choose that you, um, we identify that we think that you should go to English 3 honors next year, and then you think that you would prefer to go into ACE English or into regular English 3, then at that point, you can have that conversation with your counselor and discuss that on an individual basis with them when you meet with them in your science class. So what does the timeline look like for our course registration? Uh, step one, you did yesterday. You viewed the, your grade level registration Nearpod during the flex time that we had in the morning. That was from 8 to 8.30. Um, I know we did have some technical issues. Not everyone was able to access the Nearpod yesterday. We do have a link posted on the Student Body Canvas page. So if you were not able to view that presentation yesterday, you can go into Student Body Canvas page and you'll be able to see that presentation there now. So that was step one, you've already done that. Um, step two is to review the electives and programs slide presentation that I spoke about that's available on our website. Again, that's also linked on our student body canvas page. Step three is what you're doing right now. So you've already done the first three steps of our um, registration process. Step four is that you'll complete the form. So that's what you're gonna be doing next sometime within the next week complete that course request form. Again, you'll receive an email this evening with the link for that form, but we want you to take your time, look through it, sit down with your parents, discuss with them the courses that you wanna sign up for. There is a lot of questions that we're asking you on that form, so it's gonna take you a little while to go through it. So you wanna sit down with that time set aside in order to be able to really take your time, read all the text on that form we have um, information that's important that you read through. So take your time when you're doing it. Again, that, that form will close on the 12th. Once you submit the form, you can go back and make edits and changes until the 12th. On the 12th, we will close it and we will not accept any edits on the form. You can still make changes after that, but you'll have to make them directly with your counselor. Specifically, we'll do that when you meet with your counselor. We're meeting with our counselor our counselors through our science classes. So as I said, on the 13th, you'll get that email in which we confirm what you've signed up for and what we have you signed up for in terms of your core classes. And then you'll meet with your counselor, as I said, sometime in the next month and a half or so. We have classroom visits scheduled between now through the end of February. We will come to your science class and we will meet with you within your science class one-on-one -on -one um, over a, a span of, um, of dates that are selected for your, for your class. After we meet with all of our students that are coming in to Horizon High School and going up a grade, then sometime in early March, we'll send another confirmation email to your OCPS student email with your tentative course request that we have for you after your meeting and any adjustments that have been made. And we'll confirm those classes with you at that point in email. So here uh, is the, um, the, the, de the dates that we will be visiting your science classes. So you can find your science teacher's name here, and then you'll know the dates that we're coming into your class to meet with you. So for example, if Mr. Hellinger is your science teacher, then you know that on the 24th and 25th of January, on one of those two dates, you'll be meeting with your counselor 
to discuss your course selection. If you do not have a science teacher, you are dual enrolled or for whatever other reason do not have a science class on campus, your counselor will contact you during the month of January or February to schedule your meeting with you. This is what the course request form looks like, at least on the first page. You'll notice, as I said, there's a lot of text here and throughout the form, there is a lot of text and we, we really need you to read that. So take your time, as I said, reading everything that's listed here. There are applications for certain classes and other important information that you need to know as you're going through it. So that is all that we have to formally present to you this evening. We are happy to take any questions either in the chat or in our Q&A. So if you have um, any questions, please feel free to throw those in. And we have a question. Can you quickly go through the two year versus four year once more? I can do that. Yes. Um, so a, a two year college would, would typically be a community college such as Valencia. There's Seminole State College. We have uh, Lake Sumter College in Lake County. So uh, any of those community colleges, uh, traditionally, when, when you hear that, that term, we're talking about a two year school. Many two year colleges, including Valencia, actually do offer four year bachelor's degrees. So they are not always strictly two year colleges, but they usually do have the, the word college in their name. And um, typically, two year colleges will um, have smaller classes and are, they, they offer their own degrees, whether it's an associate's or a bachelor's degree, but they tend to be um, kind of, you can think of as mini universities or a stepping stone toward university, or if you're just seeking that associate's degree. So many students will go to a community college in order to complete their first two years of schooling. Because if a student goes directly to a four year university, for the most part, their first two years of school are going to be general education type classes that are going to be the same regardless of the degree that you're seeking. Now, that's not to say that they're, that if you go into a four year college um, to study biology, that you're going to take exactly the same class as your first two years as, let's say, a business major. I, I don't mean to say that, but for the most part, many of your classes are going to be general classes that you're going to take in your first two years. So you can take those classes at, let's say, Valencia College for your first two years, even classes towards your major um, at, at that community college, and then transfer to a four-year university for your junior year to finish out those more in-depth classes related to or specific to your major. So um, if I were to give you my, my own example, uh, I majored in um, biology and chemistry. Um, in college when I went to university. So when I was at my community college, I was taking chemistry and biology classes, but I was also taking English, humanities, and other classes that were more uh, general. So then once I transferred to the university, then those 60 credits that I earned at the community college transferred with me over to the university. So some students that go directly to a four-year school they would be working on those same classes that students at a two year college are taking, but at the four year university. So the point is that the first two years are really going to be the same, whether you're at a community college or at a four year university. So I hope that answered that question. So um, we did have a question come in. If you completed your math and science graduation requirements, what do you take in 11th and 12th grade? And that's a great question. I'm glad that you asked that, Michelle. Um, the, the graduation requirements that are set forth by the state, it's important to keep in mind that those are minimum requirements. And the point really of getting ahead or advanced, for example, many of our students come to us in ninth grade having already completed a year or two years of math. And so technically they would only require two more years. Um, however, for, um, for the purpose of, of advancing and especially of thinking of college preparation, the point is not that you finish your four year requirement early and stop taking math, but that you really continue on in advance to take the more advanced math classes that you otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to reach if you would have started um, taking those math credits in high school. 
So you would still take math and science classes. You would be able to achieve a higher level by having completed those uh, high school classes coming into high school. So that's a great question. And thank you for asking that. So I had a follow up question about the two years in a college like Valencia and you transfer to the four year university. Would you only go back for junior year or for senior year too? So if you were to take your first two years at a community college, you would complete your junior and senior year at the four year university to um, to obtain your bachelor's degree from that four year university. And uh, another excellent question, is it good to take both ACE and AP or should you stick to one or the other? I think that the, the again, the answer to that question is not black and white. There's not one that's better over the other. They are both academically rigorous. They are both college level classes. They are both weighted on a six point scale for us here in Orange County. And they both can earn you college credit depending on your score and the university's uh, requirement for what they or protocol for what they accept for credit. I think that the, um, the the comprehensive answer is that a combination of both is probably the best route for most students. However, that's not going to be a blanket answer for everyone. You definitely want to talk to your counselor more one on one about that. But I think for most students. A combination is the best option between AP and ACE. All right, and I'm just looking through to see if we've had any more questions come in. Will there be a PERT test offered at Horizon before application for dual enrollment? Yes, we actually have two PERT administration windows coming up. We have one um, in a couple of weeks in, in January, in a week actually, about a week. That registration deadline has passed. So if you haven't signed up for that PERT, you won't be able to sign up for the upcoming January test, but we do have a test in March. And although the deadline for the application for dual enrollment typically closes March 1st, Valencia will still accept scores for tests that are taken after that March deadline. So you could sign up for the March test here with us at Horizon. You can also sign up to go to Valencia to take the PERT with them if you would like to do it sooner, or you can wait until March to take it with us. Um, two year plan is good. If the four year college does require classes that actually take four years to complete, how do you know which majors require four years on campus? That's also, that's a great question and consideration, Stephen. Um, you definitely want to go into university with a or college with a plan. You, you don't want to go in blind and just take um, classes here and there. Once you start uh, college, you should know really what major you want to study. And that's not to say that you can't change your major, but I'll give you um, an example with my uh, my own personal situation in studying chemistry um, or biology. Rather, I had to complete up to biochemistry. Biochemistry was the fifth semester of chemistry. So I had to take chemistry one, chemistry two, chemistry, organic chemistry one, organic chemistry two before I could take biochemistry. That's going to be in your third, uh, third year of chemistry. So if you don't go in having taken some of those classes and biochemistry is required for other biology classes after that, then you are going to get behind. So it's important that you check out the school that you're going to be going to. So if I'm going to go to Valencia, knowing that I want to transfer to UCF, I need to check out UCF's requirements for a biology degree or a chemistry degree, or whatever degree I'm seeking to make sure that I am taking those classes that's going to allow me to go into those upper level classes when I reach university. So it's not, it's not necessarily very simple and straightforward. You want to have a plan in place. That's not to say you can't change your mind later, but it may put you behind in semesters if you're not aware of the classes that are required towards the end of your degree. So I think I'm answering your question. If not, even you can go ahead and uh, type another uh, question in there. Keep in mind that we are not college advisors. So once you're going to Valencia or to a university, um, we are not gonna know the requirements that they require for their major. You're gonna wanna reach out to them or really just to check their website because they'll provide everything on their website that you need. All 
I'm not seeing any more. Ms. McGregor or Ms. Renfro, do you guys see any questions we've missed? Um, someone has asked if the meeting with the council will be scheduled or do students make an appointment? If they have a science class on campus, they do not need to schedule their meeting. It will be um, the, the council will come to them in their science class to meet with them. And another question asks, can a student select two CTE electives? CTE, for those who don't know, uh, stands for career technical education. And yes, students can select two CTE classes. The, all of the CTE classes will be um, provided twice. There's an option for students to select an accelerated option in the course request form. And then those CTE classes will also be provided and listed again in the electives uh, category. Another thing to keep in mind with registration that we haven't, hadn't mentioned yet tonight is that students who are not on track for that FSA ELA graduation requirement will be scheduled into a reading class. So we will let you know if you need to be in a reading class, you'll select your electives um, just standardly like anyone would. And when we email you your course requests, we will inform you if you'll be placed in reading at this point. And of course, if you pass the FSA ELA at the end of the year, then you won't be required to go into that reading class. The question is now that we've gotten, which is a great question, is what is the difference between pre-ACE and ACE classes? Um, Pre-ACE classes are the equivalent of honors. So if a student is taking pre-ACE biology right now, that's the same equivalent as biology honors. The ACE biology would be the same equivalent as AP biology. So those would be the same level. Pre-ACE classes are weighted on a five point scale when we're talking about a weighted GPA. ACE classes are weighted on a six point scale. So certain ACE classes require a prerequisite to go into and certain ACE classes do not. And the same is true for AP. So for example, if you are wanting to take ACE biology, we strongly recommend, we pretty much require with very few exceptions, that you have taken pre-ACE or honors biology prior to going to ACE biology. The same would be true for chemistry. That would not necessarily be true for physics, although we don't have ACE physics, we have AP physics. You do not have to take honors physics prior to going into AP uh, physics. Psychology is another example where there's no required prerequisite such as honors psychology or psychology before going into ACE. You could go directly into the ACE level class for psychology. If you have questions about that, you can ask your counselor if you're not sure if you require a prerequisite for a course. Mostly though, those that do require a prerequisite, we've indicated that on the course request form to make it easier for you. Um, the PERT, uh, we have a question being asked, what is the PERT? The PERT is a, an assessment that students take when they apply to Valencia for dual enrollment. And it basically is a college placement test. So students take that test to inform Valencia which level classes they should go into when, they, when they're starting dual enrollment. So if you're going to apply for dual enrollment, you have to take that PERT as part of the admissions process. For dual enrollment students, can they be approved for OCBS classes addition to, in addition to their regular classes? Absolutely. Dual enrollment students can take classes on our campus. They can take classes online and um, they could also take CTE classes. You are not restricted because you're taking uh, Valencia classes. Do you need to take your SAT before PERT? No, that's not required. That's not necessary. Are dual enrollment classes offered at Horizon or do you have to travel to the college campus? We do not offer dual enrollment classes on our campus um, as far as Valencia is concerned or UF or UCF, we don't have any of those classes here and many high schools do not. You would be required to provide your own transportation for dual enrollment. However, one thing to note is that many dual enrollment classes are actually um, online now. And so students can apply for dual enrollment and you don't necessarily have to take a full dual enrollment schedule. You could take one or two classes with Valencia online. So that's a good option and a good route for many of our students to get a taste of those college level classes or still participate in Valencia classes, even if they're not able to provide transportation. Now we do have a dual enrollment program through, um, through Orange Technical College 
that is our culinary program. Our culinary program is actually post-secondary, so it counts as um, on the six-point scale, and it's technically a college class because it's part of Orange Technical College. So that's one option for our rising sophomores. Our rising juniors will not be able to go into the culinary program because you're required to commit to three years. And if you go in as a sophomore, you actually have to um, take two culinary classes in your senior year. So you'll be required to commit to that if you're gonna go into the culinary class next year. Uh, students normally take the SAT at the end of their 11th grade year. So if you, um, most of you tonight on this call are, are rising into 10th or 11th grade. And at the end of your 10th grade year, you'll take the SAT usually for the first time. You can sign up and take it anytime you like. It's not typical for students to take it before 11th grade. They'll usually take it at the end of their 11th grade year. And actually in the spring, or rather the fall of your junior year, juniors, you will take the PSAT here at school and that will um, qualify you and also inform you as to your scores on the SAT. When I say qualify, it will qualify you for the um, NMSQT scholarship. And as I said, it will inform you of your, um, your likely performance on the SAT as well as how you can prepare for it. And do you take the SATs junior or senior year? Again, yes, you would take them at the end of your junior year and many seniors take them as well in their senior year. So I'm gonna just give a minute here to see if any more questions come in. And I don't think we've missed anything. If, if we've missed a question, feel free to retype it into the chat or into the Q&A. Uh, your freshmen took the PSAT but never got scores. They did take the PSAT this year. And the scores are available on her College Board site. So she should log into College Board and she'll be able to see her scores there. If she has any issues doing that, she can talk to her counselor or to Ms. Ambrose, who's our college and career specialist. Ms. Ambrose is not actually on campus for the rest of the week, but she can come see her on Monday in the college and career room, and she will make sure that she's able to get in to get her scores. And she is located in the guidance office. Remember that we have open, um, open doors to the guidance office every day during students' lunch. So if a student ever wants to see their counselor, or go to the College and Career Center, they can come in during their lunch any day of the week. Obviously, except for the days that we'll be doing your registration and science classes. Also for our parents, we have walk-ins without an appointment needed every Thursday from 8 to 10.30. So parents, if you ever wanna meet with a counselor, every Thursday from 8 to 10.30, you can just come on in and we will um, be available to meet with you. And I did have a question about, I think I stopped presenting. Give me one moment to make sure we're still in. I had a question come in if I do not want to take AP Physics 1. But, or I no longer, I've completed AP Physics 1. I no longer want to do any physics related science. What science can I take next year? There are lots of options, Leah. I don't know what you've already taken, but um, you could consider ACE Biology, ACE Chemistry, ACE Marine Science, ACE Environmental Science, Marine Science Honors, Anatomy and Physiology Honors. And ladies, am I forgetting anything? I think those are most of our upper level science classes there. So you have quite a few to choose from. And I think that those are, we're reaching the end of our questions here. And if you guys have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us again. Come to see us during our uh, open hours on Thursday or during lunch, and we are happy to answer any of your questions or you can feel free to email us. Again, my name is Wasal Kanayo, joined by Ms. McGregor and Ms. Renfro. Thank you all for being here this evening, and we look forward to speaking with you. Have a great night.